The first interactive game that kids love playing is the game hide and seek. You know when you have a baby about, I would say about four or five months old, and you stand in front of them and you hold a blanket or a pillow and you hide behind it and then you peek out and the baby gets to see you for a moment and then you hide again and you peek out again and just that grin on the baby's face, they love it. As kids get older, the game becomes more sophisticated and now it turns into hide and seek. Right? One kid counts up until 10, 20, 80, or 100, and all the other kids go and hide. And the kid is supposed to try to figure out and find their hiding place. What is it that gives kids such great pleasure in trying to find the hiding place, and trying to, in hiding and discovering? Explains Rav Volba in his book Ali Shore that in this game comes to expression a fundamental power that lies within man. We live in a hidden world. There are so many things that are hidden from us. And as much as technology gives us access to so many different sources of information, there's still so much that we don't know. We always wonder, what will life look like in 10, 20, 30, or 40 years from now? Who will I marry? What will my financial state look like? Will I have any kids? What about health conditions? And so on and so forth. We really don't know that much. And the same applies to the spiritual world. There's so many things that are hidden from us. There's so many things that we don't know. And we're always trying to figure out, trying to find what the secret is, where it is, how it is, and so on. Shlomo HaMelech teaches us in Mishli. He says, Im tevakshena kakesef, techapsena, If you search for it like you search for money, and you look for it like you're looking for a treasure, az tavin yiras Hashem. Then will you understand the fear of God. Vedaas elokim timtza. And you will find the knowledge of Hashem. Shlomo HaMelech teaches us, if we want to have that knowledge of Hashem, if we want to understand the mysteries of life, we got to first understand that there's a treasure here. Now, the truth is never on the surface. It's always going to be either up high, and therefore you'll have to climb in order to find it. You'll have to really reach high in order to find it. It might be deep down and you'll have to dig, dig out in order to discover it. It's like a treasure. If you recognize there's a treasure there, you're not going to say, well, all right, who cares? Because there's a treasure. Who doesn't want a treasure? If you recognize there's a treasure there and you put the effort into finding it, az tavin, then will you understand, then will you understand, then will you find the knowledge of Hashem. In the spiritual world, we have to put effort. It doesn't just happen, it's not on the surface. We have to put effort. And just as much as we understand that if you want to get a degree, if you want to become a doctor or a lawyer or whatever it is that you choose to be, you have to put money, time, and effort into it. You have to have, go through those years of studying, of, of putting your time into it and your effort and your money, and then eventually you understand. You know it pays off. It's the same in the spiritual world. It's no different. You have to put your time, your money, your effort into it but it pays off because it's a treasure. It's something that you don't want to just say, oh well, who cares? You want that treasure, who doesn't? Shlomo HaMelech in Kohanlis lists out, he says seven times the word hevel, vanity. He, he says it seven times, and the question is why seven times? The answer is that he is, he's expressing over here seven times the word hevel, vanity, parallel to seven worlds which is referring to seven stages of a human being's life. And he explains. He says that a child up to a year old, he's compared to a king. A king, a baby. In his crib, everyone loves him. He's just melting. Hugs him and kisses him. His needs are all provided for him like a king. The second stage of life is at about age two to three. And then, says Shlomo HaMelech, he's compared to a pig, 
Why a pig? Because a pig usually likes to roam around in the garbage. So a two and three year old, right? He crawls on the floor, opens closet, empties out closets. Oh, that kid wants to eat on their own, no help, all over the place. Spilling things, right? Trying things out, dirty, right? The kids just, they have to experience it through making a mess, through roaming, so to speak, in the garbage. The next stage, the third stage, says Shlomo HaMelech, is about a 10 year old, from 10 onward. Then he's compared to a goat. A goat that jumps and walks and, you know, jumps around and walks around. So is, you know, you recognize that energy that kids have and they're always jumping and doing and experimenting and it's either in the park or the bike or the ball or the jump rope or the dancing, whatever it is that kids just have that energy and they got to express it. The curiosity of kids too, right? Oh ma, I just wanted to figure out what's inside the camera, so I opened it up and uh, it's not really working anymore. They're full of energy and at the same time, they're also creating damage without recognizing, without even noticing that they're creating damage, you know, just jumping on the couch for fun or on the beds. And mommy has to say we don't jump on couches in our, in our home, right? That's a 10 year old. The next stage of life, the fourth stage is a 20 year old. A 20 year old is compared to a horse, a beautiful horse, 20 year olds looking to get married, you know, all that beauty and um, just focusing on that part of life of looking for a partner and wanting to get married. The fifth stage is a 30 year old. A 30 year old is now compared to a donkey. What does a donkey do? A donkey's got to carry heavy loads, right? It has the capability of carrying really heavy things. The stage of responsibility. Now I have a wife, perhaps a child or two, and I've got the responsibility of taking care of my family. That's a 30 year old. The sixth stage is a 40 year old. Okay. Now that the family is already, it grew and there's more stability. A 40 year old is compared to a dog. Why a dog? Because now the person is putting a lot of effort into financially supporting the family. We have the electricity bill, bill to pay, the water bill, you know, there's the grocery expenses, the clothes, the schooling, health insurance, and so on and so forth. So much to do, so much to pay, and that is the responsibility of financial support of the family. That's like a dog. The last stage of life, says Shlomo HaMelech, is when a person gets old. Then he's compared to a monkey. But, continues Shlomo HaMelech, that applies to an Am Haaretz. An Am Haaretz is considered a person who is unlearned. So a person who's unlearned is compared to a monkey. But, says Shlomo HaMelech, that a Talmud Chacham, a Torah scholar, is like a king. And our question is, what does, he, what does he mean that all these stages of life are all hevel, are all vanity? You know, Hashem created us in this world. Did he create us just for the sake of nothing, of vanity? And furthermore, the first, at the first stage of life, he compares the baby to a king, and then he ends off that a Talmud Chacham, at the last stage of life, he's also compared to a king. So what does he mean by this? Shlomo HaMelech is teaching us a very strong lesson over here. He says that every stage of life, there's something which is extremely important to a person and that's the center of, their, of his life and that's what he is focusing on. But something very interesting happens. When the person goes on to the next stage of life, he suddenly realizes that what was important to him at the previous stage of life is suddenly unimportant. Do you remember those Hello Kitty stickers that were so important to you when you were a kid? You know, those kids that play with, you know, they take an empty box and they sit in it and they're like, this is my airplane or this is my boat. And then the older sister comes home and she says, what's this piece of garbage? No, 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 it's not garbage. It's a boat. It's an airplane. You don't get it. Okay. So every stage of life, we have something which is extremely important to us, and that's the center of our life. The teenagers, right, all they care about is what is my, what is my friend going to think about me? 
right? That's what they focus on. Then get on to the next stage of life and my focus is a partner. And then later on, a job, something prestigious, something that's going to pay well. And then as a person gets older, what happens? His body starts creaking. Oh my gosh, health is the most important thing in life. So Shlomo HaMelech teaches us that we can actually experience this. We can, we can understand that it's all Hevel because if once we got on to, get onto the next stage, then, okay, we recognize in the fact that this was so unimportant. So what is the purpose of life? What is this that we go through life and things are important to us and then we get onto the next stage is suddenly unimportant to us? How can we understand it? It's very simple and it's beautiful. Let's take a teacher, a kindergarten teacher that's teaching her little five-year-olds about numbers. So she has blocks in front of her and she picks up one block and she says, one block is number one. She picks up two blocks and she says, two blocks is number two, three blocks is number three, and so on and so forth. So she, te she teaches them all the numbers up until the number of nine. And the kids understand one, is w uh, one block is one, one plus one is two, and so on. Then the teacher says, there's another number that I want to teach you. And this is the zero. Okay, zero means I have nothing, right? So when there's nothing, it's zero. Calls out one of the kids and she says, then what's the point of the number? If it means nothing, then there's no number, there's nothing. Says the teacher, no. It's true. Zero is worthless. It's nothing when it's on its own. But if you take a zero and you put it at the right side of every any number, what happens? The number increases tremendously. So if you have, you put the zero at the right side of number one, you have 10. If it's at the right side of number two, you have 20. At the right side of number three, you have 30. Not only that, but if you have two zeros, what happens now? One, zero, zero becomes a hundred. If you have three zeros, it becomes a thousand and it becomes 10,000 and so on and so forth. This is exactly what Shlomo HaMelech is teaching us. He says, yes, it's true. The world is Hevel, vanity, it's nothing, it's empty. And we can understand it, but if we take that zero and we attach it to something which is valuable, to something spiritual, what do we have? We increase it tremendously. What does Shlomo HaMelech teach us? He tells us, Ach betzelem yitalech ish. A person walks with the image of God. If we understand that our purpose of life is the image of God, then we have millions. We don't have Hevel, we don't have zero. We have so much. And that's the message that we're supposed to take from this. That every single interaction that happens to us, everything in this world, whatever it is that comes our way, is all a message from life, for, uh, for, from Hashem. It's a message to us that we're supposed to take this and attach it to something spiritual and then we will have it all. A person who lives a life of Torah, what happens when he gets old? He's compared to a king. What's the meaning of a king? A king is, is someone who has control, first and foremost, over himself and then over other people. A king, a person who is a Talmid Chacham. What does Talmid Chacham mean? A person who chooses to be a student, to take every interaction, everything that happens to him in the world, and Talmid, to learn from it, he becomes a Chacham and eventually he becomes, an, uh, he becomes a Melech. And that's what we're supposed to learn. So let's learn how to live our life and not kill them.